female fighter makes her pro debut after an acclaimed grappling career, where her charisma and first round submissions turned her into one of the sport's biggest stars. I'm of course talking about Japanese legend Megumi Fuji. Who else could it have been? Today, we look at one of the greatest female fighters in MMA history, a trailblazer whose record-breaking career doesn't get the credit it long deserved. Welcome to the INC, and this is the story of Megumi Fuji. Hajime Shou! On December 22, 2000, Russian fighter Fedor Emelianenko competed in the King of Kings tournament in Osaka, Japan, claiming a unanimous decision over Ricardo Arona and setting the groundwork for his legendary 28-fight unbeaten streak. Among the people in attendance that night was Megumi Fuji, a young judoka whose career would draw comparison to the fabled Russian. Born in April 1974, Megumi had combat sports in her blood. Her father and grandfather had both been acclaimed judokas, and it didn't take long for the youngster to follow in their footsteps, attending her first judo class at the age of three. After pursuing the sport throughout her teens, Megumi switched her focus to combat sambo following the fader bout, where she went on to claim four medals in six years at the World Sambo Championships. It was during this time, Megami caught the eye of Josh Barnett. The former UFC champion had been living in Japan while competing for Pride Fighting Championships, and believed Megami's grappling base gave her a perfect foundation for an MMA skill set. After adding jujitsu and catch wrestling to her repertoire, Megami made her MMA debut at the age of 30, taking on one and one Yumi Matsumoto in Tokyo. Megami taking just 40 seconds to make an impact on the sport. Outside of sporadic appearances in America, Megami spent the next six years splitting time between Shuto and the all female promotion Smack Girl, where her vaunted grappling saw her overwhelm several of her opponents. Of Megami's 26 wins, 15 came by first round submission, with an adapted toehold dubbed the Megulak, proving her most potent weapon. <laughs> Megumi's achievements were made even more impressive due to the landscape of women's MMA at the time. The lack of avenues for female fighters meant most of Megumi's matches were contested at catchweight, often giving up a 20 to 30 pound weight advantage to her opponent. While grappling became her X Factor, Megumi was also known for her expert level of ring craft, using a mix of feints and jabs to set up her takedown opportunities before her opponents had any time to react. The combination led Megumi to be considered the female version of Fedor, the man whose performance inspired Megumi to pursue a career in the sport. Such was her dominance, a campaign was started for Megumi to compete for the fabled Pride Fighting Championships only for company president Nobuhiko Sakikabara to turn down the deal, a decision the businessman later admitted was a mistake. For all of her achievements, however, Megami never claimed an MMA title, partly due to scattergun matchmaking and financial issues plaguing women's MMA. In 2008, Megami competed in Smack Girl's eight-woman openweight tournament, making comfortable work of Cindy Hales and Seo Hiham en route to the final, only to be denied a title fight when the promotion folded a few months later. Megami split her next four fights between Shuto and Smack Girl's successor Jules, showing little sign of slowing down despite now entering her mid-30s. By this point, Megami's unbeaten record stood at 19 and 0, and fans outside Japan got wind of a mythical fighter seemingly unbeatable once the fight hit the mat. Megami would finally get the chance to showcase her skill in a major promotion, although she'd have to travel halfway across the globe in order to do so. By the end of the decade, women's MMA had seen a boom in popularity following the success of Gina Carano, and Bellator president Bjorn Rebny looked to strike the iron when it was hot. In 2010, the company announced the formation of a 115-pound division, and signed Megami to a multi-fight deal as its centerpiece. The Japanese fighter made her long-awaited debut against Sarah Schneider at Bellator 21, dominating the fight with her wrestling before finishing the American with ground and pound the only knockout win of Megami's career. Realizing that they had a star on their hands, Bellator chose to capitalize by entering Megami in an eight-woman tournament to crown their first champion, with the 36-year-old entering the contest as a substantial favorite. Megami's round one opponent was the highest profile of her career. Carla Esparza would go on to be a two-time champion and respected veteran in the UFC, but in 2010 was a 2-0 rookie taking the match on three days' notice. 
Esparza showed great acumen to stay competitive with Megami over the first round, before the veteran finally broke her opponent's defense midway through the second. There's the tap! I believe you call that a belly down Chuchi Gatami in Japan, Jimmy. Megami followed the triumph with another armbar win over Lisa Ellis, a woman Megami previously beat in her last North American match in 2007. With the fight, Megami extended her unbeaten record to 22-0, and by the time she faced 5-1 underdog Zoila Frausto, her coronation as Bellator's queen seemed like a foreign conclusion. Despite a significant grappling advantage, Megami chose to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the former kickboxer, leading to a stand-up battle far more competitive than many expected. The fight came down to Megami's striking volume versus the brute power of Frausto, and after 25 minutes of action, it was left to the judges to separate the two. Their decision took everyone by surprise. Zoila! Warrior Princess Frausto! In the same year Fedor Emelianenko lost his winning streak, Megami also saw her invincible aura cracked, and much like the Russian, faced several questions in the fight's aftermath. Some blamed Megami's flawed game plan, while others suggested age and mileage had finally caught up to the 36-year-old. While a rematch was immediately touted, Frausto quashed the rumors by immediately moving to flyweight, where her goodwill ended in 58 seconds against Jessica I. Megami meanwhile rebounded with two wins in her native Japan, including being the first woman to compete at the fabled Saitama Super Arena, before returning to America to face Jessica Aguilar at Bellator 69, Megami losing another decision despite most journalists scoring the fight in her favor. Although Megami claimed a win over one title challenger, Mei Yamaguchi, the fighter conceded defeat in her battle with Father Time, and in June 2013, announced her next fight would be her 29th and last in the sport. Appropriately, the fight would come against a familiar foe, as Megami took on old rival Aguilar in the main event of Valley Tudo Japan 3. Several thousand fans filled the Ota City Gymnasium for Megami's last stand, featuring the pomp and ceremony worthy of a fighter of her legend. The fighter's pivotal moment came two minutes into the first round, when Aguilar caught Megami with an eye poke that scratched the corner of the Japanese eyelid, leading to doubts over whether the veteran could continue the match. With her opponent's vision compromised, Aguilar continued to land shots through Megami's weakened defense, and with her swelling reaching unmanageable levels, the ringside doctor chose to wave off the bout. The fabled tenure of one of the sport's all-time greats, ending in inglorious fashion. Megami called time on her career with 26 wins and 3 losses, but still continued to remain involved in MMA, working as a coach alongside her husband as well as an analyst role for the Japanese promotion Ryzen. In 2015, Ryzen attempted to coax Fuji out of her retirement for their inaugural event, but the fighter's age along with the recent birth of her daughter meant such a deal never materialized. Megami Fuji remains one of MMA's most important women. Names like Ronda Rousey and Chris Cyborg cite her as a key inspiration in their involvement in the sport, and her 22-fight winning streak at the top level will likely never be beaten. Megami's biggest crime, however, was coming too early for her own good, and was past her prime by the time she got to showcase her skill on the big stage. In the dark age of the pre-Karano era, Megami was a bright light whose story deserves more kudos from modern fans. Her appearance on Ninja Warrior, however, that can stay in the archives. This is the INC. Please like, share, subscribe, post your feedback in the comments, and ring the bell so you never miss a video.